The Citrus Synthesizer creates a huge range of sounds utilising FM, RM, pluck string synthesis, three filter and distortion modules, effects with chorus, delay and reverb, as well as a programmable unison mode which can quickly add depth and texture to very simple sounds. Fully customisable envelopes and LFOs can be applied to virtually every synthesis parameter and this combined with all of Citrus's sound generation options allows you to create everything from bass sounds, strings, brass as well as complete loops and rhythmic grooves. It's useful to scroll through the extensive preset list that comes with Citrus to familiarise yourself with its sonic capabilities. Each component of the Citrus interface is accessed via the set of tabs at the top of the window. Common to all windows is the modulation matrix. The modulation matrix allows you to quickly and easily define the interactions between the six sound sources, called operators, along with the routing through the filters, FX and the final output of Citrus. In FM speak, this is referred to as an algorithm. Traditionally, FM synthesis has been a rather off-puttingly complicated method of sound generation, but thankfully Citrus simplifies the process to a marvellous degree, while still being extremely flexible with its sound possibilities. The basis of FM synthesis, which stands for frequency modulation, is that one or more operators are assigned to modulate either themselves or other operators in the matrix. The result of this is very distinctive and allows for the generation of an incredible range of sounds that go far beyond the traditional subtractive synthesis methods of other synthesizers. The modulation matrix is laid out in rows and columns. The numbers 1 to 6 refer to the 6 operators. Activating a knob in the matrix will cause the operator in that column to modulate the operator in the equivalent row. You can switch between FM and RM levels with the button at the bottom of the matrix. Here, I am modulating operator 1 with the output of modulator 2. Notice how the ordinary sine wave sound becomes more and more harmonically rich as I turn the knob. The pan knob will set the pan point for the particular operator. And the FX knob controls how much of the operator signal is sent to the FX module accessible through the FX tab. The output knob controls how much of the operator signal is mixed with the final output signal. Down on the left hand side is the filter mix controls. Each knob controls how much of each operator's output is sent to the filters. Note that you can turn the output of an operator to zero, but have it sending signal to a filter. If you then turn up the output knob for the filter, you will be able to hear only the filtered sound of the operator. Turning the output for the operator back up will mix the unfiltered sound in together with the filtered sound. The main tab contains global controls that allow you to quickly alter parameters in a, in a patch even if you have little familiarity with FM synthesis. The XY controller is a flexible means for controlling multiple parameters with one mouse movement. Here I have the X controller affecting the filter cutoff frequency and the Y controller affecting the amount of modulation imposed on operator 1 by operator 2. The rest of the main tab contains global controls for affecting the volume and filter envelopes, EQing and the modules that are being EQ'd, as well as functions that relate to the unison mode. For more info on all of these, consult the FL Studio documentation. Each operator tab is exactly the same. The top section controls the shape of the oscillator. You can turn on pluck mode and make sure that the oscillator has lots of harmonics so that pluck mode does have an effect. Control the phase as well as change the frequency and pitch ratio. The ratio will take you through the harmonic series. Have a search on the internet for more about harmonic series. Beneath the ratio, you can control the volume as well as the depth of the pitch envelope and LFO modulation. Underneath the oscillator shape, you can select the various parameters that you want modulated. Each of these, except the OS tab, offers the same choice of envelope, LFO, keyboard and velocity mapping, XY controller mapping, randomization and unison mapping. The mapping controls all use FL Studio's envelopes familiar throughout the rest of the program. Once again, consult the documentation or watch the automation video for more on envelopes. The envelope and LFO modulation targets are activated by pressing the enable button at the bottom of the envelope editor. To enable any of the map targets, draw a curve from left to right. Preset shapes can also be accessed through the options button. The shape will update as you select different presets. 
the envelope editor itself is placed on a grid that relates to the tempo of your project. To sync the LFO or the envelope to the tempo and any tempo changes, press the tempo button. You can also quickly zoom in on the envelope with the zoom box and use the scroll bar to move through the view. The OS tab also has an editor that allows you to quickly edit the harmonics contained within the oscillator. The filter tabs have a similar layout to the operators. The top section allows you to define the type of filter as well as the cutoff and resonance. Apply the wave shaper to distort the filter as well as feed the output of the filter into the next filter using the next knob on the far right. Beneath there are the filter parameters that can be modulated with the same array of modulators found in the operator tab. The FX tab allows you to control the chorus effect as well as enable each of the three delay lines. Note that both the chorus and delay line tabs contain a volume slider and the reverb tab contains a wet volume slider. Presets for both the chorus and reverb effects can be accessed through the options button under this Citrus name. The now familiar envelope and LFO controls are available below for pan and volume. Throughout this tutorial we have looked at Citrus for its additive capabilities, but it is also a very capable subtractive synthesizer as well. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to start with the default Citrus patch. At this point the sound is just a sine wave and doesn't have much going for it frequency wise. So if I go to operator 1, right click on the waveform display and select SAW, you can hear how much brighter the sound is. I'll do the same to operator 2 and adjust the detune slightly to thicken the sound up a little. And I'll just set it to about 2.01 to get us going. Next I'll need to route the output of oscillators 1 and 2 into the filter. And I do that down in the filter 1 input levels mixing strip. And for us to be able to hear the filter's output, we need to turn up the filter 1 output knob in the master out strip. And then turn down the output of operator 1 that was already there from the default patch. So I'll just alt click it. And then I'll select the filter tab and activate the envelope for the cut parameter. And this gives us a very warm, analog, almost Juno 106 sounding subtractive synth patch. The Citrus synthesizer can be as deep or as simple as you like. Give yourself the time to study the documentation for it so you can be sure that you're not missing out on one of the most powerful and great sounding FM synthesizers around.